There are concerns about whether Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu and Russian President Vladimir Putin are similar when it comes to violating human rights. Some experts believe that Netanyahu has committed more human rights violations compared to Putin. However, what's surprising is that, unlike Putin, there are no arrest warrants against Netanyahu. Recently, the South African Minister of International Relations asked the International Criminal Court ICC prosecutor why there is no arrest warrant against Netanyahu, especially when there is one for Putin. Unfortunately, the prosecutor didn't answer the question. Lately, there have been conflicts involving both Russia and Israel that have drawn global attention. In Ukraine, Russia annexed Crimea in 2014, leading to tensions between the two countries. The situation escalated when Russia intervened militarily in Ukraine, and there have been reports of human rights abuses and civilian casualties. In Israel and Palestine, there have been long-standing conflicts over historical tensions and territorial disputes. The current hostilities have led to civilian casualties and have been widely reported in the media. The recent escalation of conflicts between Russia and Ukraine and Israel and Palestine has caused a surge in violence and has led to casualties on both sides. However, experts note that while there may be some similarities between the two conflicts, it is crucial to examine their distinct nature and geopolitical dynamics. Russia's actions in Ukraine are often seen as attempts to exert influence in the region and maintain strategic control. They have geopolitical implications for Europe, involving power struggles and questions of sovereignty. In contrast, Israel's involvement in Gaza is rooted in historical conflicts and competing claims to territory. It is part of the broader Middle East dynamics where historical, religious, and territorial disputes intersect. Despite these differences, there are some notable similarities between the two conflicts. Both Russia and Israel have used force in the form of military operations and airstrikes, resulting in civilian casualties and raising concerns about the impact on non-combatants. The loss of innocent lives in war zones has drawn criticism from the global community, and both Russia and Israel have faced international condemnation and sanctions in response to their actions. The international community has expressed concerns about the use of force human rights abuses, and the overall impact on regional stability. While Russia has faced widespread condemnation and sanctions for its actions in Ukraine, Israel's actions in Gaza have garnered mixed reactions, with some nations criticizing Israel's use of force and others asserting its right to self-defense. As tensions continue to escalate, it is essential to examine the distinct nature of each conflict and their geopolitical implications. The global community must work towards finding a peaceful resolution that upholds human rights and promotes regional stability. Many countries have used economic sanctions to try and influence other countries' actions. Two places where this has happened recently are Ukraine and Gaza. In both of these places, there have been problems for a long time because of things like religion and territory. The leaders of Russia and Israel have been criticized for how they've handled things. People have been wondering if they're making good choices and if they're doing things the right way. The problems in these places have affected the whole world, not just those areas. It's caused countries to think about how they work together and what they should do when there are problems like this. Some people are asking why the leader of Israel isn't being looked at the same way as the leader of Russia. If they did the same things, it's not fair that one gets treated differently. This makes people think about what's fair for everyone and what human rights mean. The issue of selective outrage or support based on geopolitical considerations is a growing concern in the world. Despite the cornerstone of international humanitarian law being that human rights are universal and apply to everyone, regardless of nationality or political affiliation, it seems that the international community's reactions to conflicts are not always consistent with this principle. A case in point is the contrasting reactions to Russia's and Israel's actions. When Russia allegedly violated human rights in Ukraine, it faced widespread condemnation and sanctions. In contrast, Israel's actions in Gaza have in some instances garnered support rather than criticism. This raises questions about the impartiality of global reactions and leads to the question of whether the political stances of influential Western powers sway international communities. The role of geopolitical influences in shaping international responses to conflicts cannot be ignored. The West, comprising powerful nations with significant diplomatic sway, has been pivotal in determining the narrative around global events. 
When the West criticized Russia for its actions in Ukraine, international communities echoed this sentiment, highlighting the influence of powerful alliances. However, the tide seemed to shift regarding Israel, with Western nations throwing their support behind the country. The perception that actions are judged not on their merits, but on the geopolitical alignments of involved nations, erodes the foundation of global moral authority. It damages the credibility of institutions that uphold justice and human rights universally. This poses inherent dangers, as it can lead to a lack of accountability for those who commit human rights abuses. Recently, South Africa's International Relations Minister, Nalini Pandor, has raised pertinent questions about the International Criminal Court's handling of cases involving Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu and Russian President Vladimir Putin. Despite similarities in the alleged actions of both leaders, a striking difference has emerged in the ICC's response, prompting South Africa to challenge the apparent inconsistency. Minister Naladi Pandor has made a bold move in questioning the ICC prosecutor regarding the absence of an arrest warrant for Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. This query was made in light of an arrest warrant for Russian President Vladimir Putin. The response from the prosecutor was reportedly unsatisfactory, leaving room for speculation about the reasons behind the disparate treatment of the two cases. South Africa has taken a proactive stance by filing a case against Netanyahu at the ICC, accusing him of war crimes. The country is actively seeking the arrest of the Israeli Prime Minister for his alleged involvement in actions deemed contrary to international law. This highlights the importance of holding leaders accountable for their actions, regardless of their political affiliations. The recent move by South Africa to issue an arrest warrant against the Israeli Prime Minister highlights the nation's strong commitment to holding leaders accountable for their actions, regardless of geopolitical considerations. It is important to note that both Israel and Russia have not signed the treaty that established the International Criminal Court, ICC, indicating their lack of recognition of the court's authority. It is essential to understand that the ICC has the power to prosecute individuals rather than states, and its jurisdiction extends only to those nations that have voluntarily submitted to its authority. However, the issuance of an arrest warrant against the Israeli Prime Minister raises questions about the ICC's consistency and impartiality in carrying out its mandate. Meanwhile, in the case of Putin, the ICC has yet to take any action despite allegations of human rights violations. The discrepancy in the treatment of the two leaders highlights the need for transparency in the legal processes undertaken by international institutions. This is particularly important given the power disparities that exist in the international system, with certain nations wielding more influence due to their economic, political, and military strength. Although Western nations, particularly the United States and major European powers, have historically held substantial sway in global affairs, international legal proceedings such as those conducted by the ICC are intended to operate independently of political influence. Therefore, it is essential to ensure that these institutions uphold their mandate to promote accountability and justice, regardless of the political power dynamics at play. The concept of universal human rights is based on the fundamental belief that every individual, regardless of their nationality, race, ethnicity, gender, or any other factor, is entitled to certain basic rights and freedoms. However, in reality, the application of this concept can be quite challenging especially in the face of political power dynamics and geopolitical considerations. The recent Israel-Hamas and Russia-Ukraine cases have highlighted how these factors can influence the prioritization and selective attention given to certain human rights violations. Powerful nations often face less scrutiny and consequences for their alleged violations of human rights compared to less influential countries. This highlights the unequal distribution of power and the challenges inherent in enforcing human rights standards universally. South Africa is one of the countries that has taken a strong stance on advocating for human rights issues, even when it has strained their relationships with Western nations. However, many other countries have remained silent on the issue, even when faced with clear violations of human rights. The lack of an international criminal court ICC warring against Russia, for instance, has been a source of concern for many nations, but they have refrained from speaking out. It is important to ask why some nations do not raise their voices when it comes to addressing human rights violations. Do they not believe that human rights are universal? Is it because they prioritize their own national interests over basic human rights? 
These are important questions that need to be addressed if we want to create a world where human rights are truly universal. If you are interested in learning more about this important issue, we encourage you to subscribe to our channel and watch more videos like this one. Thank you.